Well, here we go, everybody. I think I finally settled on the settings that I like. I... We are in Mount Everest right now, the Mount Everest region. And you can see I'm getting 42 frames per second here, 40 to 42 frames. Okay, so it went to 39. All right, I'll, I'll accept that drop. <laughs> now, this is an easy area to get high frame rates, right? There's nothing here but white and black. Now we are in Bora Bora in a little bit more detail, and we're still getting decent frame rates. I, I consider it decent. If it's over 30, I consider that to be very flyable. And so right now we are getting 34, 36 frames per second, 35. So what I'm doing is I'm flying in different areas, just grabbing the discovery flights so that you see different areas and different planes and how my settings react. Now we're in um, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, the frame rates here are a little bit lower than they were in Mount Everest but this is obviously a much more complex area. I mean, look at all the buildings in this area. And yet I'm still averaging close to 30 frames, 32 frames, 34 frames there. So the frame rates to me are still acceptable. I think you go to 35, 36 frames per second here. This is Tokyo that we're in now. Now this is a very, very busy area, so the frame rate really drop here. Now my settings are up pretty decently so that there is actually room for adjustment. If I was going to fly in a city like this more often or more, then I could definitely make changes and bring that frame rate up to the 32, 33. Golden Gate Bridge, so obviously San Francisco area now. Again, frame rate still fairly close to 30. Now my detail that I'm seeing outside is very, very nice. The numbers inside, I can read what I need to to fly. I can't make out all the small text on the bezels around the switches, but I can hit the mouse button and zoom in if I need to see those. But I can read everything that I need to see. Okay, Copenhagen now. And of course, it, it changes with the planes, the locations, the time of day. So you gotta really shoot for an average, and that's what I did. I also wanted to make sure that I could still read the menus when I was changing my flights and selecting my flights. I wanted it to be you know, usable, like this 34, 35 frames in this area to me is very, very nice. These are the uh, Laughlin Islands, Laughlin Islands, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. Now this is probably the type of area I would be more likely to fly in and when I was flying into this area I was actually around 38 frames per second as I get closer to the water it drops a little. Again, I will gladly take 32, 34 frames per second with the graphics quality that I have set up right now. Now I run an RTX 3070. Okay, now we're in the Panini Alps, I think it's pronounced, and this is one of the most beautiful areas in the world, I think, and one of my favorite areas to fly. Now, this is somewhat complex landscape-wise, not building-wise, obviously, but landscape-wise, and yet I'm still averaging 36 to 38 frames per second in here. So I determined that an Oculus Quest will never, this is departing from KAVL in the stagger way, non-pre-programmed flight. And still, yeah, 31 frames per second is fine taking off in this area. So I, I will accept that. And maybe you won't, but maybe you will. So I run an RTX 3070 on a AMD Ryzen 9. This, my, all my specs are in every single video that I've posted. All my computer specs are in there. I use the Oculus Quest 2 with Steam VR and Virtual Desktop Oculus app. That's how I like to fly. I tried the cable. I even tried it with the OpenXR Toolkit was released, the new version. I still cannot get this quality and this performance with the Oculus Link cable. Maybe it's my USB 3 port. Maybe I don't have a good.
good port on this Alienware for it. I would think it would because this computer is you know, less than a year old. Um, so I would think it would. But anyhow, so I'm going to show you the settings that I have set up. Maybe they'll work for you. Hopefully they will. If you don't have quite the hardware that I have, then you just got to tone them down a little. So these are the open XR toolkit settings. Now I have my advanced settings turned on. I cannot use FSR. My frame rates drop about five frames per second with FSR. Size you can see is there. Now the numbers may seem a little different than what you get and that's because I have my Steam VR default settings cranked up which I will show you. Inner ring 70%, middle resolution half, outer ring 70, outer resolution 1 8. And then I use the offsets and the scales in order to get the funky little black lines and dots out of my vision. So here is the Steam VR settings. My overall general setting is on auto. But then I actually go into the video settings and the per game video settings. And the per game video settings, you will only see this option if your Microsoft Flight Sim is in VR mode. So you kind of have to leave it in VR mode and go back to your desktop to access the settings. So now these are my video settings. Again, we're on auto and I have the advanced super sample filtering turned on. I'll get this is what works for me. I'm very happy with the results. I've been flying with it a while. I've there's so many settings. I think now that there's just too many options for changing settings. And you have to make a trade-off, I think, outside or inside. You can either have a really, really detailed cockpit and everything outside not so good, or everything outside really good and a somewhat decent cockpit. Like I said, when I'm flying, I can see all the numbers I need to. If I need to look at something a little closer, then I just zoom in. So now this is the video settings per application. You can see it says FS2020 and I have my resolution at 160%. So that is how I make my in-game resolution what it is. To me it's similar to going into the Oculus Quest and changing the render resolution in the Oculus Quest app. That has no effect on my Quest now because I don't use the Oculus driver or the oculus software so i do that through this now these are my nvidia control panel settings and i didn't change too many of them but i i mean i i've changed them a million times it seems a million combinations and sometimes i forget which one worked good and it's uh oh, it's so hard to keep track of which settings you've changed but I have the anti-aliasing transparency off. I'm not sure if that's the default. Uh, Anisotropic filtering application controlled. The power management mode on uh, prefer maximum performance. Everything else is global setting. So I'll make sure I have it in the text as well. If you can't read it, then maybe that'll be the way for you to see it. But I'm also reading them off to you. So, okay, so anisotropic sample Texture filtering is off. Negative LOD bias, allow. Texture filtering quality, high performance. Trilinear optimization, on. Then the next two are global settings. And vertical sync, on. And virtual reality, pre-rendered frames, four. Game mode is off. I have HAGS, the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling enabled. And I have the variable refresh rate also enabled. Now the next change that I made, and I haven't really done a whole lot of testing, but it does seem to definitely make a difference in the quality. If you look in your local cache folder, you'll see the user cfg.opt file. In this case, it's at the very bottom here. Um, now, if you do make this change, I recommend that you make a copy of this file and save it someplace else so that you can replace it if things go screwy. However, there's just one very minor change and it should not cause anything to go kerfluey. But again, this is a user config file, so you have to be careful and I'm giving you that caution and that warning right now. 
So what you need to do is scroll down through the file, you open it up in a text editor, scroll down through the file till you get to the VR section, scroll to the bottom of the VR section to the post process section, and what you're going to change is the fourth option down where it says sharpen. Now you see mine says a zero, yours will probably have a one. You're going to change that to a zero and then hit save. Again, I have not done a ton of testing with this, but it does seem to make a difference because the sharpening is being really handled with the OpenXR toolkit. So this is a virtual desktop streamer app, which has to run for virtual desktop to work. And my preferred codec, automatic, automatic adjust bitrate, start with Windows, start minimize. Very basic, those are really all the settings there are for this. Yeah, I might try changing that adjust bitrate automatically and see what happens if I set that to not automatic. I assume I can pick a bitrate myself. I might have to try that and see. If you try it, let me know. Post a comment. Now these are the virtual desktop settings. Again, probably hard to see. So my VR graphics quality is set to high. VR frame rate, 90 frames per second. VR bit rate, 100 megabits per second. Sharpening is at 70%. Gamma is at 1.00. SSW, the synchronous space warp, disabled. Sliced encoding is enabled and increased color vibrance enabled. And those are the settings on the streaming for the virtual desktop application. And you can see my GPU utilization down there. The game is actually running right now while I take that picture, and it's at 57, 58% while it's sitting there running. And now this is the overall settings, uh, environment quality, low, frame rate, 90, desktop bit rate, 60, screen brightness, 95, dynamic lighting disabled, boost clock rates, I have that enabled, and increased color vibrance, also enabled. And so those are my settings. I really hope that they help you. Again, you know, watch any of my future videos from this point out, and you may be able to make a decision on whether or not you want to go through these settings. Thanks.